YouTube, welcome back to another exciting episode of ORN. That's the Olympus Reptiles News, your one-stop shop for everything going on on YouTube. And we have a great show for you today. As always, I'm Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and my partner is... Camera Guy Kurt with the Olympus Reptiles. Let's get right into it. Our first person up to talk about is Constriction Addiction. Now, you guys know we picked up our scaleless head from Constriction Addiction, and he just started a new channel. On his very first video, he started it without takes. This is going to be fun. Is it recording? In his last video, he talks all about how he likes his racks. A little smaller and green. Our racks, as you can see, they're green. They're, they're sporting the mascot colors, um, but they're, they're pretty green. We've also been watching Balls to You. And that dude is setting up a meeting for all the reptile breeders in the United Kingdom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold some breeders meetings up and down the country in the UK. I think that's pretty cool. I want to know, should we do that here in America? Set up a meeting for everybody? Also his accent. How can we compete with his accent? I think a meeting would be good, you know, where a central place is. What? Well, maybe Kansas. Kansas, yeah. Kansas. It's right, right in the middle. It's all come to Kansas. Um, Logan from Intelligent Design Reptiles, he has a uh, video where he does an unboxing, and guess who he uses as a partner to help him? No idea. He uses a, one of his pet bunnies. A pet bunny? Yeah, what do you think the bunny's name is? Uh, Peter? No, try again. Paul? Uh, how about Pablo? Pablo the pet bunny. Yes. Okay, well, whatever works for you, I guess. Would you say we'd hop right into it, Pablo, instead of jump into it? I've also been watching Nerd, and Kevin has a friendly dwarf caimans. And I'm serious, like, a dwarf caiman you can reach under and scratch its little chin friendly dwarf caiman. You're so good. Yeah, you are. I had a friend try that with Sobek, and he could only count to nine now. So what, can, if, what if he uses his toes? Can he uh, count further than nine? I don't know. I'm not sure the guy can get his shoes off. He's kind of special. We also have Prehistoric Pets TV. And I tell you, Jay is pulling some eggs from one really pissed off retic. But don't worry about Jay. Jay is perfectly safe because he has his buddy there helping, who they were calling Snake Bait. And guys, if anybody ever gets you to sign up for a job or your title is snake bait, you might want to look for one more job. That shouldn't be your last application. I have a feeling that my nickname for this video is going to be snake bait. Bait, correct. Yes. So, All right. But, but bait. That, but you see, so, so here's what I did on purpose. See, there's no target. Just one target. <laughs> <laughs> the last channel before I pass it back to Kurt will be DEA Exotics. DEA Exotics, he starts talking about all the drama that's in the community. And now I'm talking about his rat community. It's like real housewives of the reptile world. As a matter of fact, it can literally drive you to drink, so check it out. This is the community I'm talking about. Them guys there. All of these guys up here. So that's the drama. I think uh, MTV found their new uh, re reality show. What's their new reality show? No, the... Uh, Rats. Oh, Real Housewives of the Rats, yes. Um, so Sophie Caroline, she does an, a video about endangered turtles. She goes over like the green sea turtle, the loggerhead sea turtle. Today I'm going to be talking about the endangered turtles, the green sea turtle, the loggerhead sea turtle, the four-eyed turtle. But you know what she forgot? What one did she forget? She forgot the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I haven't seen them since the 90s. I think they're endangered. Huh. They've been a while. They've actually been back. They have? They've been back. They're, they're, they're popular again. They are? Like, I think so, yes. But let me tell you about one of my, my all-time favorite channels to watch. That's Brian Gundy. And Brian Gundy, he goes on there, he shows you how to deal with stuck shed. Actually using your hands to help remove the shed. Grab a piece of skin that's on the snake's back, and you literally just start pulling it. You don't have to do anything other than this. And somewhere on Facebook, someone who once saw a pet snake is probably losing their shit over it. Oh, one other thing i got to share with you really quick. It's so important. 
On our last video of the news, you guys saw we had paper in our hands, and I have a pen, and it's really just to keep me busy because you guys thought we had a script. We don't have a script. Let me show you. Let me show you what we've been doing. I'm so, like, this is what I've been up to. It's not a script. I've literally been drawing. So what I've been doing to doodle to keep my time is, whoop, this is a picture of a unicorn. See? It's got a little pointy nose, and it's a happy unicorn and smiling. It's also got a picture of a guy in the back, you can see how happy he is. And what he's trying to do is ride this unicorn. But to ride it, he has to like do a trick ride. He's trying to like put his hands on the back and hop up and get on that unicorn so he can ride that unicorn. But he's got to hop up over it and get that trick saddle right. Fun to like do do the one. It's all Matt, hurt. <laughs> do you know what the cutest sound in the world is? I actually do. What is it? It's got to be the sound of baby alligators. Yep, the baby alligators chirping. If you check out Brian Barchek's video, he has one where he shows a bunch of baby, baby alligators chirping. It's just really, really cute. I love me some baby alligators. I also love me some boxing boa. He is a great channel to watch. And he talks about the good and the bad of the hobby with breeding. His captain kind of camera bombs. The bad news is I only got one egg. And um, how many eggs is normal? Um, in a carpet. And stick around because he is also our interview today. And speaking of the good and the bad of the hobby, you ever watch Dark Science Reptiles? A few times. A few times. Well, Dark Science, he mentions problems with YouTube. And as a reptile channel, his problems with YouTube. And the problem is a notification bell. People apparently are clicking the notification bell and then it's disappearing. So make sure you get ours clicked. Yes, YouTube's been doing some updating and that kind of screwed up some stuff. Notification bell for a lot of channels, for whatever reason, that kind of is now unclicked, I guess. So a lot of people are saying they're not getting the notifications. So I guess that was part of the update that they did that kind of got screwed up. So um, just want to warn you guys. And so you have to go back there and redo it because YouTube did something. And all I can say is, man, try being us, brother. I wish my YouTube problems were that simple because YouTube, YouTube still refuses to talk to me. I just lost my pen. That was an outtake. We're going to leave it. They still refuse to speak with me. They've hammered more of our videos. So Dark Science, can, can you and I trade YouTube problems? He does make a cool bioactive tank, though. And then, of course, we also talked to Going Youper. You know, I always talk to Going Youper. And Going Youper goes to the casino. And he does a podcast. At the casino? At the casino. And guess what? Did he win? I don't know. But we didn't get an invite. Really? Yeah. I did. What? Yeah, you didn't? I did not. Did you get an invite? No. Oh, Going Youper, do a podcast without us at the casino. Come on, man. Podcast tonight, 10 Central. I'm doing mine up at the casino, because uh, that's where I'm going to be. Uh, but... You don't want to miss the show. I will put a link below. And Matt, what is your favorite movie? I like Remember the Titans. Remember the Titans. But what about Cliffhanger? I have honest to God never seen Cliffhanger. You haven't? No. That's, you need to go do that like right now. What, what, after after oh. we do this. But in Cliffhanger, there's Sylvester Stallone and he's like hanging from a cliff. That would make sense with the yeah. title. Well, in uh, Mad Bio Reptiles, Chucky... He does a video about what you should know before you buy a reptile, which is, you know, really, really important. You should, you know, there's a few things you should know. But in the video, he's showing clips of a reptile expo, and there is a lizard that is hanging from the top of the cage, <laughs> just like Sylvester Stallone. He's working on his biceps. Doing pull-ups up there. We gotta give a quick shout out to one other new channel out there. And Tim Lottman, who's been a longtime supporter of ours, recently started a channel and he just hit his first clutch ever. It's a bumblebee times pied, so may all hatch healthy and happy, Tim. Some pearly whites down there. It's a bumblebee paired to a pied. So let me get the eggs off of her and I'll put them in the incubator. Awesome, thank you. All right, before we go to our interview with Boxing Boa, we got Question Girl in the house. Question Girl, do you have any questions for us? Yeah, didn't Vanilla Ice find the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles recently? I have no idea. I thought he was in the most recent remake of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You are talking about crap that we know nothing about, so you're going to have to help out on this one. Oh. They've, they've made movies now? Yeah, yeah there's been new movies. I do know that. Some oh. weird human... 3D animatronic thing. I don't know. 
But I thought Vanilla Ice had been in it. Well, or maybe, maybe. he was just in the Kraft Mac and Cheese commercial. I could be, really but you know what? If, if you're there, Vanilla Ice, and you're listening, we would love to collaborate because we can all collaborate and listen. If you ever want to come back with like a brand new invention, any other things, Kurt? Before we get to our interview. Nope, I think that's all. All right, stick around. Let's get our interview going with Boxing Boa. All right, well, now we've reached the interview portion of our video, <laughs> and today we're here with Boxing Boa. And you can hear us pretty good in there, right? Yes, I can hear you guys just fine. Excellent. Well, you know, we're going to do 12 questions, four standard questions for everybody, four random questions from our special bucket, and also four questions that are specific to you. So the first question is, your biggest success in reptiles. What is it? Having my son involved with reptiles with me. That to me has meant more to me than anything I've done reptile related because it's brought us in uh, closer togetherness and bonded us for a lifetime through our passion. That's, that's awesome. So I'd you know, say he's my biggest success. And that's cool because I don't have kids, so getting to see people bring their family into it is. It's something that if I ever have kids, I hope I can do. So that's, that's awesome. Our next question, of course, is what is your biggest failure in reptiles? My biggest failure in reptiles is when I retired as a fighter and I got a job with the city, um, I kind of went through an issue where I was like, what am I going to do with my life? And I ended up selling over 200 of my snakes and went down to just one boa and I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I would have just, you know, my family tell me, no, Jay, just stick, just don't do this, don't do this. And I was like, no, no, I got three kids and I got to, you know, I'm not making that fighter money no more. And it's like, so I kind of panicked and I wish I wouldn't have done that. Fair enough. That brings us to our first random question. Oh, I like these. Oh, these are my favorite part too, I'm not going to lie. And this one is... Oh, this one actually came up last week for, <laughs> for uh, going you for two. Are natural male enhancements worth the money? Um, no, because if you exercise, things like that, if you actually do research on stuff like that, it's actually due with blood and blood flow. So usually men that have those type of issues, it's to do with blood flow, and it, it can be rectified with just simple exercise. You're probably the only person who's ever going to give a scientific answer to that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. The next question is, how did you get started in reptiles? Um, well, when I was uh, a kid, I went out on the farm all the time and um, um, it came across my foot. And my dad freaked out. And when my dad freaked out over the bull snake, um, I was like, okay, here's a six foot three man terrified of this little snake, but to him, and I just, I just fell in love with it. And then finally, when I was 15, my mom said, hey, go ahead and order snake. So I did the mail order, you know, where you write, you get the little sheet and you write it what you want. And I got my first albino Burmese python at 15, sent to me UPS. And I didn't even know what day it was showing up. <laughs> that is crazy. So that got me going. Start with an albino Burmese. That's like starting big, right? Man. Yeah. All right. And where do you see the industry going? To me, the industry going, I think I think if we look at what the Klubers did and then that transferred into the ball pythons, and I see that going into now with the boas and with the carpets, it's only going to keep evolving. Every species of snake is going to continue to evolve just by going up the template that was laid forth by the Klubers as far as morph goes, different like combinations and, it's, and it transfers into other states. So I see the industry going very much vast with time. Look what they've done with their geckos in the last 10 years. Yep. And that brings oh, us to... I, that's where I see the industry grow. I just grow. Oh, we're having a little cutout problem. Are you still with us? Oh, there you are. It kind of froze up for oh, a second. Yeah, I see you. Let's go to the next random question. <laughs> Do you like big butts and cannot lie? Uh, that is one of my favorite songs. Um, but um, I like tone butts. I like I like fitness. I like tightness. Um, <laughs> to me, I like I like women that are, are have nice physiques that take care of themselves, just like I try to take care of myself. <laughs> Fair enough. 
And then why carpet pythons? What got you into carpet pythons? Um, Ed Lilly, a really good friend of mine. I've known for over 15 years now. He had, we both been into boas together, and he had been on me for years to get carpet pythons. And finally, when I started getting going farther into my snake hobby, I'm like, I want something. I want a python again, because I haven't had a python in, since the Burmese back in the day. Um, and I came across Ed's post on King Snake, and it was a caramel jag. And I remember seeing the first jag post in the old reptile magazines before they did away with it. And I just knew I had to have that female. I got her. I named her Heroin because she started my addiction to carpet pythons. <laughs> I like that. I like the Heroin name. And then you kind of answered this in a previous question, but we're going to go with it anyway. The name, Boxing Boa. I'm going to guess you've done some boxing. Tell us a little bit about your past on the boxing. Um, yeah, um, I did, uh, I was, I did, I started off with Taekwondo, became a three-time national Taekwondo champion, four-time world Taekwondo champion, uh, went on and did Muay Thai, lightweight amateur champion and so forth, and then did Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and then I opened my own gym, and, um, I was sponsored by Adidas for several years through Taekwondo, which was nice. Um, if you've seen old put pictures of on me on Instagram, I didn't have tattoos then because I was sponsored that back then they wanted to be clean. Right. Um, but then I opened my own gym and named it Boxing Boa because I had boas, I bred boas, and I loved doing boxing. I um, I boxed for years. I did Muay Thai for years and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for years. And honestly, the thing that you don't see is like um, we can talk about the success of being a fighter, but what you don't see is I train seven hours a day, you know, six days a week, you know, and that that includes two hours of boxing every day, two hours of Muay Thai, two hours of Taekwondo, road work, working out, and, you know, then your diet and nutrition, because I walked around at 164 and dropped down to 134. So you had to drop 30 pounds for a fight? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was not fun, I, and, and, and I'll be honest with you guys, I, I don't, it's something I don't shy away from, my trainers back then told me, you know, this is how you do it. They gave me diuretics and things like that. So they would cut water weight, basically? Yeah, which is why I have fake teeth. Oh, because it's bad for the, yeah, that makes sense. Because when you, when you strip your body of all that, your nutrition, you're not putting in. Now there's ways to do it healthy, but back then it was, this is how you do it. Um, your, your body starts looking for calcium and minerals, and you're not giving it to it. So it takes from your teeth. That's so cool. my teeth full. Not cool that you had the teeth, but like I'm saying, it's cool that you like what you all you had to go through for that. And I think people don't realize how much work they think people just show up and they fight one day and make money, but there's there's a ton that goes into getting to that day. I would imagine, you know, months oh, and months yeah. and months and months of preparation for that one that one day of work. So, oh. yeah. and I bet too when you watch today's lots of, market, lots of broken bones. <laughs> yeah, and then today's market with the uh, you know the mixed martial arts fighting that's really taken off. I bet you, do you ever wish you could have, you know, been into this, I guess, 20 years, like not 20 years ago, you were doing it there, but like, like being into yes. it now. Like, yes. Don't be kind of cutting out on me. My biggest issue was the fact, it's not that I didn't want to keep going, I could have kept going, but the injuries started compounding, you right. know, um, I've had seven, uh, 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 uh Full hit toe and hamstrings on my right leg, eight on my left leg. Mm. You know, I've shattered my elbow, rotator cuff, hairs. You know, uh, after a while, it just takes a toll on you. And if I would have got with uh, better trainers and not cutting the weight, I would have lasted a lot longer, and I think I would have went further on. Uh, I would have been in the UFC, but I definitely would have went further than what I did. That's awesome. That you got, I mean, not that you had to get cut short, but that you just were able to do so much. Like, it's, you know, you don't get to talk to somebody who's done a lot of professional fighting and listen to what all they go to and, like, that injury list, that damage to the body. And then, you know, you're still, I imagine, working out quite a bit today just to stay healthy and in that, but I would it's got to stack up. Oh, yeah. All right, well, that brings us to random question number three. We put some new ones in here, too, so we'll see if we get one of the new ones. Oh, we did get one of the new ones. It's like I predicted that. That's where I didn't. Oh. This is a would you rather piss sand or shit bricks, literally. Well, because I value my man parts, I'd rather shit bricks. 
because I need my man parts. We all need those every now and then, right? <laughs> yes. All right. Thoughts on current YouTube new rules with demonetization and small channel punishment? Um, honestly, I think, you know, I think the demonetization um, was not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. I think that what it did, and this is how I look at it for me, it made me realize that I need to strive harder and work harder on my own channel. It's something that I didn't do. I didn't push, start pushing my channel until late last year. Or actually, you know, a few more months before I even knew about the demonetization. That's when I started up in my game. And then when the demonetization came out, I realized that, wait a minute. I'm the CEO of my business, and this is YouTube. My channel is considered would be considered your business. It's your platform. So it's up to you to work it and push it yourself. Now, when it comes to some of them punishing the smaller YouTube channels, um, I think they need to be a little bit more clear cut on the rules because I've seen some um, things where, especially like I've seen people get deemed, um, IDR is a perfect example, they've been deemed several times for uh, uh, music violations, but yet their music are, are and they're getting it from YouTube and some company in India keeps saying, hey, that's copyright. But yet I've heard other channels play, you know, Guns N' Roses, and they don't get deemed for it. So I think YouTube needs to really redo their algorithm and figure out what is bad and what is good, you know. And I mean, one of the biggest things that drives me nuts is I'm, I'm a big gun freak. Um, I believe in my guns. And I've noticed a lot of YouTube gun channels are being demonetized and taken down. You know, and it's, I, I, you know, and I'm not trying to talk politics, but I think it's a big liberal push, and that needs to be fixed. It, I'm with you. Where I mean, obviously, I've worked in law enforcement for almost 20 years, so you don't do that and not be a gun guy at some point, right? So, I, yeah, and it, I, I think they are pushing their political agenda a little bit on the rest of us, and that's a shame because I don't think YouTube should be about that. I mean, I think it's a place where people from different places can come together, whether they're what they believe, no matter what the religion is or their politics. We can come together. We can talk snakes, or we can talk whatever the hobbies are. So I hate to see that push live. I'm in total right. agreement with you on that. Oh. Yeah, and they're trying to sit there and say, well, you know, we're trying to keep people. They're trying to do this and that. And the thing is, if someone wants to put a stupid video out there where it makes no sense, then it's up to us as the viewers to either not watch it or watch it. And to be told what we can and can't watch, it just goes against everything I feel as an American. I'm with you. All right, next question. What animal is the next big thing? And you can't say carpets. Um, to me, the next big animal that I think coming up is going to be uh, blue town skinks. I really think I, those are hard to find right now. Uh, I, I, I see a lot of people saying they want one. They can't find one. They're in high demand. They're, and they're relatively, you know, they're two or $300 just for a normal. So I could see Skinks being the next big thing in Reptile. All right, we got one more random. One more random question. We'll dig down here to the bottom, see what we pull out. Hi, Heidi. Oh, here it is. Your favorite restaurant in your hometown. You got an easy one for the last. Oh, yeah, that would be uh, Red Robins. I love my Red Robins. <laughs> I get the one with the blue cheese. Yeah, That's my. help it. I understand. Yes. And the fries and that campfire sauce. That's good stuff. Oh, their fries are delicious. <laughs> their fries are delicious. But you, you, if you don't, I'm telling you right now, if you like, 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 get North Dakota's Dodge fries. I mean, pretzels. Those are the best pretzels you will ever get. If you find those Dodge pretzels, yeah. Get I'll have to check it out. They're All right. Delicious. Well, that brings us to the end, and I want to tell you guys, if you're not watching him, you really should. Whenever I first started, this was a channel I watched. I don't know if you know that or not, but it's true, because you were having, like, handling baby carpet python videos and, and those kind of things, and I had just gotten my first carpet python, and that helped me quite a bit, seeing how other people were doing things and handling. So if you're not watching Boxing Boa, you should start. Anything else you want to add before we go? Yeah, please come here for a second. This is my son, Priest. Here, Priest, you got to sit down so you can get. This is the man behind the camera. This is this is my son, Priest. This is the guy that sets everything up for me and makes the Boxing Boa channel happen. He's the one that pushes it. He's the one that comes up with ideas for my videos. 
honestly, this is the generation, and this is why I do it, because of kids like my son and other kids out there up and coming. I want them to get a channel where they can see something where not only is an adult talking about it and giving proper education on it, but behind the scenes, there's a young teenage boy running in the show. That's awesome. So, this, uh, so that's why he's the one that runs the show for us. Well, and let's be honest. It is a family show, and it's because of him. And it, without people like Priest, he's the future of the reptiles. I'm going to get old and die one day. We all are. And it's that younger generation that's going to have to take over, and then their kids beyond that that's going to have to take over. So we certainly need to bring people in like Priest. And it's pretty awesome that he's your version of Kurt doing your camera work. So, all right, guys, well, I think that's all we have. Anything else we need to cover before we get off of here? I just want to say thank you so much for, you know, um, having me on, having my son on. And another thing I want to say is, don't don't be afraid just because you think you have knowledge to ask someone that, that has the experience for help there's nothing wrong with asking for help in this reptile community there's a lot of us good guys that will help each other absolutely as a matter of fact i just watched a video last night where you talked about having help on that carpet python and the egg binding issue so i know you that's coming from your heart uh yes all right guys thanks for being here and it was an honor for us to have you like i said i watched your channel when i was first starting out so i certainly appreciate everything you guys do and we'll see the rest of you next week